Welcome back to Sunday School, Class B. It's Teacher Jenny again. All our Class B teachers feel like it's been forever since we've last seen you, but we know God is good, in control, and keeping everyone safe and healthy. Let's begin with prayer. Dear God, we pray you will help us do our best to choose obedience, even when it is difficult. Please help us remember that you are pleased when our heart's desire is to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's take a moment to review last week's memory verse. Psalm 1-3 He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Good job, Class B. We know Sunday stories come from God's word, the Bible. So let's take some time to review our Bible story from last week. Who was this giant and who did he fight for? Very good. The giant's name was Goliath and he fought for the Philistines. Goliath challenged the Israelites to send a man to fight him for how many days and how many nights? Exactly, 40 days and nights. At the same time, David was sent by his father Jesse to check on his brothers. And what did David say when he heard King Saul's men tremble in fear? That's right, David said he would go and kill Goliath. But David's brothers and even King Saul himself did not think God could use a boy like David. But their opinions, they did not change David's mind. He went to the stream and what did he pick? That's right. He picked five smooth stones. Well, David, he took his stones and what did he do? He hurled one towards Goliath, chuka, 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 bonk. And what happened next? Oh, correct, Goliath fell with a great thud and died by David's hand. Nice, Class B. Now let's learn two stories about how God responds to disobedience. The Ark of the Covenant was God's special box that he instructed Israel to make out of wood and gold. And what was inside the Ark of the Covenant? The two tablets of the Ten Commandments. The Ark was a reminder of God's promise to the Israelites that he would stay with them. God was very clear in his instructions about the Ark of the Covenant and commanded men not to touch the Ark but to hold up its bars to the right and to the left, both in the back and in the front. King David gathered 30,000 Israelites to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. That's a lot of people. They placed the Ark on a new cart, and as they traveled, the Israelites celebrated God with instruments and in song. At one point in the trip, the oxen of the cart unbalanced the ark, and a man named Uzzah reached out to study it. Oh no, what happened next? The anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah for not following God's commandment, and God immediately struck Uzzah down, and he died there by the Ark of the Covenant. Everyone who saw what happened, especially King David, became very afraid. Even though Uzzah might have tried to help the ark, God was very clear that men were not to touch the Ark of the Covenant. Uzzah disobeyed God's instruction, and Uzzah's disobedience brought death. Much time passed, and in the spring, when King David and his men normally went to battle, David happened to stay behind in Jerusalem. One evening, 
King David saw Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, one of David's mighty men, from his rooftop and sent for her. Soon after, Bathsheba became pregnant with King David's child. King David sinned before God. King David sent for Uriah from battle. And when he arrived, King David tried to convince Uriah to spend time at home. Instead, Uriah slept at the king's door with the rest of David's servants. When King David asked Uriah why, he replied, he could not do this when the Ark of the Covenant and King David's men were sleeping in open fields away from home. King David sent Uriah back to battle and ordered him to be sent to the front line where Uriah was killed. When news reached King David that Uriah had died, David brought Bathsheba into his house and she became his wife and bore him a son. But what King David did was evil in the sight of the Lord. God sent his prophet Nathan to King David to rebuke him for what he had done. To rebuke means to correct wrongdoing. Nathan told King David, you have done evil before God by striking down Uriah and taking his wife as your own. To make matters worse, you thought you were acting in secret, but God sees and knows everything. David replied, I have sinned against the Lord. And King David responded to God in the right way by taking responsibility for his sin and repenting before God. To repent means to be sorry and to turn away from sin. Nathan told King David that God's punishment was that David would not die, but that David's son with Bathsheba would, and Nathan left. Just as the prophet Nathan said, King David's son became very sick. And though David fasted and prayed, the child died, but God forgave King David and later gave him another son, Solomon. God punishes disobedience. God punished Uzzah for touching the Ark of the Covenant. When everyone in Israel knew no man was to touch the Ark and Uzzah died, God punished King David for his evil and for trying to hide what King David did from everyone, including God, and King David's son died. Our lesson today reminds us that when God gives instructions on how his children are to live, we must trust and obey him. Now let's take a quick look and moment to review this week's Bible story. What is this? The Ark of the Covenant. And are men allowed to touch it? You're right. Absolutely not. Who tried to touch the ark? Uzzah. And what happened to him? Uzzah died. Time passed. And who did David see from his rooftop? Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. Bathsheba became pregnant with King David's son. So David, he sent for Uriah to come back from battle. But did Uriah go back home to Bathsheba? No, Uriah slept on King David's steps. When King David sent Uriah back to battle, what happened? Uriah, he died. Then King David took Bathsheba as his wife. So who did God send to rebuke David? The prophet Nathan. And how did King David respond before God? King David repented. But what happened to King David's son? David's son died because of King David's disobedience. 
Here are the two coloring pages for this week's Bible story. What is here in our first coloring page? Yes, that's the Ark of the Covenant being held up by four men. And who is this person kneeling in our second coloring page? That's right, Class B. That's David kneeling before God to repent for his sin. Our first coloring page reads, the Ark of God is holy. And our second coloring page reads, David breaks God's commandments and repents. Parents, please take a moment with your child to color the Ark of the Covenant and David and ask your child to share one thing they learned about God from this week's Bible story. Now let's practice our memory verse for the coming week. Psalm 1-4 Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. What does our memory verse mean? Chaff are the parts of plants that are thrown out or not worth anything, and the wind blows them away. Or in other words, they are easily moved or shaken. Very simply, our memory verse says that unlike the blessed man, the wicked are easily shaken and will be thrown out. Parents, please take time to review and memorize this week's verse with your child and text your video to Teacher Crystal for a penny. Class B teachers will place pennies in your child's jar upon our return to Berean. Teacher Jenny will now close us in prayer. Dear God, help us to remember that when you give us instruction, we must follow and obey. We know you are a holy God and that sin deserves punishment. We thank you for sending Jesus to pay for our sins and to save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.